Hello everyone, this is Sanjay Parashar. Welcome back to our channel, Integration Guru. So today is our fourth session of Oracle 12C tutorial. And today we will be doing the actual programming, actual coding. So we'll start with the hello program using Beeple component of SOA. So there are different components in Oracle SOA 12C. And we are gonna start with BPEL, which is a short form of business process execution language so this is your j developer which so i have created one application integration guru app and now we will be creating a project here so to create a project you will need to go to files new and project or you can simply press ctrl n on your keyboard so i'm a little under the weather today so i'm my voice might not be as clear but I think we can go ahead with that so you will simply type SOA project and it will come up like this so you click on SOA project here so you give a name so let's just say hello people so this is a name which will go under integration guru app project name is hello people so you can see the directory structure here you click on next and now as I told you that there are different components you can choose any one of them so today we will be using people so if you know people if you can do coding in people that means in my opinion 70 to 75 percent of Oracle SOA is done because most of the complex business logic is developed using business process execution language only so either if you want you can choose your component here or you can choose component later on as well so let's choose later on so we'll click on empty composite here we'll click on finish <coughs> so as you can see that we have a blank uh, hello people project here and here as well you can see all those six components which we saw while creating the project so people process is the one that we will be using and in subsequent videos in future videos we will try to cover each and every component along with most of the important technologies as well so we can drag and drop it to the component panel here and we will see the people properties opening up so here there are two different versions of people people 1.1 and people 2.0 so we will be using 2.0 only so there isn't much uh, difference between 1.1 and 2.0 it's just some of the functions which was there in 1.1 has been deprecated and now uh, now to in 2.0 we have been there have been some new functions which are introduced so we will give a name to our people process so we can simply say hello people process so namespace i think i will create one separate tutorial for the namespace part only like what is default namespace what a target namespace what are the significance of them when we try to import or include anything uh, in visual or xsds so it's a bigger topic so just let's just say that this is uh, for time being let's just say that this namespace is somewhere of an unique identifier for your process okay usually in in all the projects your company gives that what should be the namespace in here for example your project name company name and stuff will come here and then some relevant uh, application name project name and people process name here so it will give you the directory as well that under the people directory under root folder soa this people component will be created and now here this is the important part so you want your people process to be synchronous a synchronous one way or you want to use a visdel or you want to subscribe an event to create this people process as we are creating a hello program so basically we want some name to be given to our service and we just we'll just greet that name concat that name with hello string so we will be using a synchronous people process so synchronous is when we 
get a request and we want we will have to give a response back to that request in a certain amount of time is synchronous asynchronous is fire and forget so any asynchronous process gets a request from the user and then it is not mandate for that process to reply back or to give response of that request uh, then and there and one way is uh, as the name says it's a one way process so there will not be any response for this particular and if you have a visdl which you want to use in a beeple process then you will use this option and if you have some edl file which you want to subscribe to using beeple so these are the uh, you will choose that event one so for now for the simplicity purpose we will use the synchronous beeple process only and we will be exposing this as a soap service so the end user will make call to this soap service only which we are exposing and here we will need to give the schema so either we create one schema by ourselves or it creates us one for us which has one input as process and one output as process response so we'll keep it as it is and in transaction we have required requires new not supported so this is this comes in handy when we are dealing with transaction so this required will keep the existing transaction to this people requires new will create a new transaction so this comes in handy when we have multiple different calls to different people processes and we want to either have a new transaction created a new thread created for this people or we want uh, an existing transaction to carry forward through this people only so for the basic part i don't think we should be worried about it probably later on when we will get into the complex stuff then we will see what needs to be done when it comes to transactions and one way delivery policies when it comes to asynchronous processes but for now for simplicity purpose synchronous is uh, we are creating a synchronous beeple process that means we'll get some input and we will give the output back to the user and the transaction we are keeping it as required and we are using the default schema which beeple creates by our own which will have a process uh, input parameter and process response as an output parameter we'll click on okay and our beeple will be created <coughs> so this is the schema that i was talking about so it got created by its own but if you want we can create our own schema and then give into the beeple where it was there so i have double clicked on it so it is taking some time for it to open and make sure your server is started so i have started my server and you should be able to log into your em console because later on we will be deploying it and testing it as well so this is the schema which was by default created so input we will get some input from user and in result we will reply back hello user something like that so if you double click on beeple now your beeple component will open and along with beeple component you will have set of activities that you can use in order to achieve your business logic whichever whatever the requirement is so here we have receive input and reply output so the in synchronous beeple receive and reply will be there by default and if you come here and you check the variables so there will be two variables automatically created based on the default schema so here you can see its process and here it is process response here it is input and there it would be result so these two variables are automatically created but on the right hand side you will be able to see a set of activities which will come in handy whenever you want to achieve a business logic any requirement that you want to achieve through people all these activities that you can see on your right side will come in handy so uh if i go through each activity one by one and try to explain you guys this is going to take this tutorial will be of like 2 3 hours then so it's better we keep doing pocs and we'll keep giving you some insights of the uh activities one by one so for example now our agenda is that we'll get something on this variable which is input variable 
we will modify something suppose we will be concatenating hello word and we will be replying it back to the output variable so to do that sort of things we have this assign activity here we will take it drag and drop assign here and we will simply do use a concat function and we'll apply it to the output variable and we will just simply give it a name like assign hello user there is no rule as such that what should be the name of these activities it just it should make sense to be a good developer you should know that it should make sense so here you can under this result so we want to take this input from user we want to do something with it and then assign it to the result so here we have different functions we have string functions math logic a lot of functions like hundreds of them are here based on different requirements so for this particular tutorial we will be using string function and in string we will be using the concat function so concat is basically uh, whenever you have any doubts about any function you can simply check their signature and what the description is so in concat it basically adds two strings so here i will say hello to whatever user say user gives and these two strings should be separated with comma now click on ok apply ok and as a matter of fact this service is done and now let's try to deploy it and then we will also test it so when we deploy it we will deploy it to the application server and i think i covered that already in previous tutorials how to create application servers and all this soa domain which we created on our first tutorial when we created a standalone domain when you click on next it will look into the server if your server is up you can select folders from here so in my server i only have the default folder so I'll click on next and finish and now if it is working or not you can simply check logs by going to windows and logs option is there or you can also press control shift l so this is the deployment logs here So deployment is finished in around 25 seconds so now when we will go to our enterprise manager we should be able to see that service which says hello people and then we can test it so we'll come here hello people is the last deployed service which do, which was deployed today only and <coughs> For that we'll click on test here once we click on test it will give us an option to give the input uh, let's let me give it my name Sanjay Parashar once we do the test web service it should return hello Sanjay Parashar as per our coding so it says hello Sanjay Parashar if we want to check the logs or and check the flow we'll click here and we can see that in assign activity we modified Sanjay Parashar to hello Sanjay Parashar like here as you can see so in input we had Sanjay Parashar and now in assign program we created hello Sanjay Parashar and we replied it back to the user so it's quite simple however of course in real time scenarios in projects the requirements will not be as simple as this one but gradually we will get into the complex stuff as well but i think it's a good start and next i am planning to 
do a hello program using mediator as well because people and mediator are two kind of important components however every component Im is important that's true but people and mediator are the two components where the magic happens where the most of the business logics we implement or most of the messages we process from uh, source to target using this business process execution language and mediator only so i think this is it for today and if you guys have any questions queries whatever you want to say yeah